Hello and welcome back to another video on web development with Flask. My name is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. In the previous videos, we talked about how we can build a fully featured CRUD application with user authentication features where we had uh, a login logout feature and also how we can create, update and delete our workouts. In this video, we'll talk about something called as pagination and how pagination works in Flask. So let's see how our app looks like. So here, as you can see, we are logged in uh, into our test account. And uh, when you go to all workouts, I've uh, took the liberty to add a few uh, placeholder workouts here. So as you can see, there are 16 workouts and uh, it becomes tedious to scroll all the way down when we have a lot of workouts in. Uh, when you track your push-ups for around two, three months, this becomes really tedious to scroll all the way down. So now we are going to uh, add a way uh, to have pages or paginate our application so that we don't have to see so many workouts in the same place. We can have multiple pages where we can see our workouts. So let's see how we can build this. So now let's go to the main file and try to locate our uh, workouts. So here we need to have make some changes inside our all uh, route where we show all the workouts. So first, uh, instead of using user.workouts or accessing the workouts in that way, uh, what we can do is use a different way. So what we can do is use workout.query.filterPy and we filter the workouts by the user. So the author is equal to user. Now, it was similar to what we had done before, but the only way, the only difference is that we're using the workout class to actually get our workouts. Uh, and we're filtering by the user, which is the current user in this case, as you can see on the line on top of it. Now, all we have to do uh, to have pagination in our application is to have a dot paginate function call to it. And that is it. So of course there's more to it, but Let's see how this works for now. So let's first decide how many uh, workouts we want in a page. So this has around 16 workouts. So let's see if we have three on each page. So let's say per page equal to three. And now uh, let's see what this paginate function uh, gives or returns uh, for a workout. So, print dir uh, the way we can print all the uh, at methods our workouts uh, object has so workouts and let's see what the output is so let me clear this out run the application again and let's refresh this and there's an error so give me a second so it's not iterable okay oh i see so since we have changed our workouts, we will also need a way to change these. So let's do it a bit differently, my bad. So we'll keep this here and we'll say workouts paginate and go to workout dot query dot filter by and we filter by the author, which is the user. We call paginate and we make sure that there's only three per page. And what we can do now is just print all the methods which we have under workouts paginate. So yeah, now we won't break the application because once we have our paginate method on our object, we need uh, a different way to handle these uh, for loops here. So yeah, this should work now. Let's go back and change our server and let's refresh. And as you can see, uh, it's not breaking. And here we see all the methods that are available with our workouts object. So we have the class, attribute, new, reduce. So for pages, we have has next, has previous, 
items inside each page, uh, how to iter or iterate through pages, uh, the next page, which page it is currently in, uh, the per page uh, items, previous, etc, etc. So now, uh, we can use this uh, these methods to actually have pagination inside our application. So let's see how that works. First, uh, let's just print some uh, method just to make sure it's working. So let's just print items, workout.pagination.items and print workout.pagination.items page so we want to see the items inside uh, each page and also the page on which we are so let's run it again and we can refresh our page and as you can see we have only workouts two three four uh, only three workouts in our first page and we have we are on the first page so now we know that the paginate method works and uh, let's see how we can include this or connect this with our front end and make sure this works properly so now what we need to do is first we can oh sorry about that we can remove this and now replace this with our workouts variable and completely move this uh, first now that we have pagination into our web, play, uh, web app, we need to know or we need to tell our application which page to be in, right? So what we can do is whenever we change a page or whenever we go to the next page, uh, we have a different URL which is question, uh, question mark page equal to something. So these are the parameters in uh, on our URL. So we need a way to actually get these parameters and then use them to change our pages. So here we can use request.args can be request arguments and we need the page argument uh, by default. So the next uh, parameter is what should be by default. So if there's no page argument, then it's one and the type which we accept is int. So here after the question mark and page equal to, there will always be an end and nothing else. So now that we have the page, uh, so if we are on page two, then this gets the two uh, value on the variable and we can pass that here into our paginate method. So page equal to page, actually my bad. Yeah, so what is happening here? So first, we uh, by default are on the first page where we see all the initial workouts and then we pass the and when we go to the next workout and when we press the neck the button for the next workout we get a different url so it's going to be page equal to two so this two is sent back to the page variable uh, and it is sent back to the page init method and the workouts four five six are then shown on the HTML page. Now that we have uh, almost, uh, we are almost done with the back end. Let's see how we can connect this to the front end to show the pages into our web page. So let's make some changes here. So first, I don't uh, think it's good to have everything on this left side. So let's change that first. Let's center everything. So I'll just use a center tag. Won't make it complicated. Just get everything inside this, and I'm going to use this guy again and do this once more. So, yeah, so let's just see if that was right and everything is centered now. So, we just need a simple all, and okay, my bad. So, uh, yeah, since we have made some changes here. Uh, we will not be able to render this one properly, but let's figure. Let's uh, talk about the centering later and focus on pagination. So first, now we cannot use uh, for workout and workouts because workouts is now an object. So we need to use workout dot items, uh, which is going to be our uh, loop 
to loop through all the workouts and get the push-ups uh, number, comment and date posted. And next we need to make some changes or add a few things inside our uh, file. So let's see what they are. So first we need to loop through all the pages that we have. So we use Jinja templating here. Uh, for page num in workouts dot iter pages we saw this when we were listing all the methods and let's see what parameters to add so I just add the parameters and then let you know uh, what they do so left edge equal to one right edge equal to one left current equal to one and right current equal to one okay so now what did we do here so uh, when we are iterating through our pages so when we have those buttons to navigate through different pages uh, we just want to show one page on the left of the current page one on the right edge and one just adjacent to the current page and one just adjacent to the right. So we don't want to populate our entire uh, pages list with all the pages. Suppose you have 100 pages, you don't want to show one to 100 buttons on the bottom, right? So we'll just show one current page or one current page, left to the current page, right to the current page and the rightmost page. So that it's a bit smoother. And uh, now uh, we need to have some conditions. So let's see what they are. So if we are on the page, uh, which is currently open, so if workouts dot page is equal to the page now. So if we are on the page where it's supposed to be, right? So we will be having a different button. So I'll just talk about that in a minute. So now if we are on the exact page where you want to be then it's going to be having a button class button info so this is going to be a button filled with blue color and have some spaces and it's going to link back to user workouts which is right here and we're going to pass the page num as page num so that we know which page to go to and if that is not the case we are going to have an else so else and if we are not uh, if it's not the page number we are on then uh, don't show the highlighted text but show an outline of it and we'll see what I mean by this uh, in a bit and we can end the if so just before we end the if I must want to hand, uh, add something else to our page so uh, we did end the if so let me just add a few things here My bad. So if page num first, we're just making sure if there is a page num, if there are pages or not. If there are pages, then check which page we are on. If we are on the current page, then show that button differently, or else show the outline of the button. And uh, when we are only showing uh, left edge, right edge, and one. Uh, le one left current and right current we want to show everything else by a dot 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 so that you know we know that there's something in between them and yeah so I think we're good to go uh, we were able to handle everything properly so uh, what changes would we make here so we iterate through all the pages make sure the parameters are right if the page uh, pages exist then if we are on the current page show a different button if you are not on the current page, then show a different button. And if uh, we have a lot of pages in between, show the dot 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 symbols so that we know that there is uh, differences here. And yeah, so now we can run our application and see what we've done. And let's refresh this. And as you can see, now we have one to six. So now let's go to a different page. So let's go to page two. So as you can see, we have the dot dot dots and we can navigate through one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's go to three again. And here we have three. 
let's go to four or five and as you can see two gets hidden so it's easy to navigate back and forth uh, we can add a bit more here so that you know it's not just one and six but a bit more but as you can see we go to six we get the last workout we go to five we get the workouts before that four the workouts before three and so on so this is how we add pagination to our web app and uh, just to reiterate on what we uh, learned today first we use the paginate method to do this and it returns uh, a paginate object then uh, we make sure that there are only three per page so this can this is up to you you can decide how to uh, have how many number of workouts you want in a single page then uh, just to make sure that we uh, can track different pages uh, we know that the url is going to be like this so page equal to one so we get the parameters and once we get it we save it in the page and pass that here and again we go to our html file uh, and to show this or enter this we loop through all the pages set our edges and show the buttons so as you can see the page i am on on one we have the button info class and if we are not on the current page then we have the outline class so now if i go to page six then six has the button info and one and five have the outline class so this is how we know which page we are on and the rest i've been showing by a dot 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 so yeah this is uh, about pagination and now our application is completely ready and we can now uh, deploy our application on the internet using Heroku which we'll talk about in the next video. Thank you.